If seeing all those acronyms makes your head want to explode and say WTF, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to explain what SSR, CSR, ISR, SSG, and all those acronyms mean, what the differences between them are, when you would want to use them, as well as the pros and cons between all of them. This is going to be the complete crash course you need to know on how all these different acronyms work. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I first want to define what SSR, CSR, SSG, and ISR stand for. SSR stands for Server Side Rendering. CSR stands for Client Side Rendering. SSG stands for Static Site Generation. And ISR stands for Incremental Static Regeneration. Now this all sounds like a bunch of goobly glop and nonsense to you, that's perfectly okay, because in this video I'm going to break down exactly what each of these different categories means and when you'd want to use them. Now in order to do that, we first need to understand all the steps that a site goes through from the development process all the way to when it actually renders on a person's browser, because the actual steps in this process are what all these different acronyms really influence. So the very first step that you have is going to be the build process. So after you're done writing your code, you need to build your code, compile it, transpile it, whatever you need to do to convert your code from your raw source code to the code that's actually going to be used and rendered on the site. The next step is then someone is going to request a URL on your server and your server is going to do some type of work to process the page, process the request, and then send down the page to the user. Then when the page gets to the user, on the client, the client actually needs to go through and render out all of that information onto the screen and do any of its additional processing work that needs to happen. Now, depending on which of these different acronyms you decide you want to use, the different lengths of time each of these different steps is going to take is going to be different. And depending on your use cases, you're going to want to choose one over the other. Now, you may think that every single website falls under one of these four different categories, but there's actually almost like a fifth category that is how the web used to work before front-end frameworks and all this client-side routing came to be. And that's just a normal server-rendered application. So if we look at the chart for how this would look like, the build time for a server-rendered application is going to be relatively small. Essentially, all you're going to need to do if you're writing in JavaScript is bundle up and transpile your JavaScript code to whatever node version your server is running on. Then when someone makes a request to your server, this is where the vast majority of the time is going to be taken up. And that's because what happens is it takes in the request and then what your server needs to do is build the entire HTML page and all the data that goes into that page, wait for all that information to be compiled, and then it sends that down to the client. And then this final step of the client is pretty much zero. And that's because there's almost no client side code at all. There may actually be none. Really all the client needs to do is just render the HTML that was given to it by the server and then maybe run a little JavaScript if you have some on your page. So as you can see by this chart, the server side portion of this is where almost all of the work is happening. So you need to make sure you weigh that pros and cons. You can have a more powerful server that can handle these requests and go through them rather quickly. And your client doesn't need to have a very powerful device because it doesn't do really any work at all. Now, when it comes to examples of sites of this type, pretty much any site where when you click on a link, it does a full page refresh. This is almost every single time going to be just a standard server rendered application, just like websites have been built since the beginning of the web. Now, moving on to the other four different types that I've talked about, this is kind of the main reason that you're here. And I want to go all the way to the other side of the spectrum with CSR client side rendering. And this is kind of how a lot of sites were built once React and other front end frameworks first came out. So if we look at the build step, this is going to be relatively short because again, it's the same build step as the server side version. Where this becomes drastically different than the server side version though, is absolutely nothing happens on the server side. When someone requests your page, it's just going to send them down the exact page. It's just going to send them the HTML and the JavaScript, and that is it. And the important thing here is it doesn't do any work to build out the HTML. It just sends down what it has. There is absolutely no work done on the server at all. All of the work is then pushed onto the client. So the client takes on the majority of the work in this scenario. And that's because once it gets the information, it then has to run the JavaScript and that JavaScript builds the entire application and the entire page. This is how pretty much any React application works out of the box if you don't make any changes at all. This is actually something that's very easy to see if you just view the source of a page. 
For example, this is my job boards page from my React Simplified course. It's the final project in the course. I'll link that course in the description if you want to check it out. But you'll notice if I view the source of this page, it's just essentially a blank HTML page that links to a few different JavaScript files. And those JavaScript files use all the React code to build the entire site. So all of the actual building and constructing of the site is happening on the client side and nothing's happening on the server. This can be really beneficial since you don't actually need a server at all really to render your code, but it's going to push a lot of extra work down to the client. Now, if we look over at server side rendering, this is kind of going back towards the more traditional approach of a actual just server. So this is SSR. In SSR, your build time is still essentially exactly the same. It's relatively small. But now when you get a request on your server, it's actually going to generate all the HTML before it sends it down to the client. So when someone makes a request, it runs all your code and it builds out the raw HTML of your page and it sends that down to the client. So then the client actually has your HTML already. But in order to make your HTML work with React or whatever framework you're using, it needs to hook up your HTML with the front end framework you're using. So there's a little bit of work that's done on the client. So it's going to be more work on the client than in the very old school traditional server side version, but it's way less work than client side rendering through CSR. It just hooks up your different components together. This is generally called hydration and it just adds a little bit of extra work on the client. But then from there, everything works just like a normal client side rendered application. But the majority of the workload is on the server, but all your nice client side benefits of like easy page navigation and so on, all of that is built into the actual client. This is incredibly popular and a lot of frameworks that are built on top of front end frameworks, for example, Next.js, have this built in out of the box so you get this really nice server rendered experience where your client and your user doesn't have to do as much work so it doesn't matter if they have a lower end computer or phone they can still view your website with no problems and the next thing i want to talk about is a really cool one because it's quite a bit different than everything we've talked about and that is ssg or static site generation static site generation kind of flips the script because now what you're doing is you're making your build step much longer and that's because when you build your site Normally, all you do is you transpile your JavaScript, minify your CSS and stuff like that. But in the case of static site generation, you're actually generating the static version of every single page in your application at build time. So if your application has a thousand pages, you're generating 1000 individual unique HTML pages. All of that is happening. It's being built at build time. And then you're just serving down those HTML pages to the actual client. So when it comes to making a request to your server, your server doesn't have to do any work at all, just like in the client side rendered version, because all you're doing is just giving them the HTML that you've already built during build time. And the client also doesn't really have to do any work. All that the client has to do is hook up a few things on the client side to make navigation and stuff work, but it's already working out of the box. So the client side portion is again, incredibly small. Because of how small you can make the server and client portion of SSG, it's incredibly popular if you want to have a very fast and very high performance site. But obviously the downside is you can't have any dynamic content at all. This means that if you have a site where like users are logging in or things are changing all the time, like Facebook or other social medias, for example, this is not a good option because it doesn't work very well with dynamic content. But if you're running like a blog or like an e-commerce site where your information is relatively static, this is a really good option because now you can pre-build everything at build time and then you can serve it all up incredibly fast without the need for a complex server at all. A really great example of this is my blog. I wrote my blog in Astro, which uses static site generation. So the entire thing is incredibly fast because it's just serving you an HTML file that's already pre-built. And every time that I create a new blog article, I just rebuild my application to get that new article in place. Now the downside to this is as your application grows to be thousands and thousands of pages, the build time can become quite slow. For example, on my blog, I have maybe 100 to 200 articles on it, and my build time is maybe one to two minutes. It's really not that long at all. But if you have an e-commerce site where you have thousands of products and all those products have thousands of different variations between them, you could have a massive amount of pages, which could really slow down your build time to be like hours or even days long. And that's where the next option of ISR comes in. ISR stands for incremental static regeneration. And all that really means is that it's combining together SSG of static site generation and SSR for server side rendering. And that's because you get a lot of the same benefits of SSG where you have really fast load times, but you also have the benefits of SSR where you can have dynamic content and your build times won't be as long. So with ISR, what you're saying is that some of the pages on your application are going to be statically generated just like SSG. Literally nothing changes about them. 
but maybe you have some pages in your application that are dynamic, or maybe you have some pages that there's just way too many pages to be able to statically generate them all at build time, and you need to be able to do that over time slowly. So if you have dynamic data that doesn't change super often, but does change every once in a while, or you have too many pages to statically generate, ISR is a good alternative because you can statically generate some pages. And then for all the pages that you didn't statically build during the build time, when people go to request those pages, it's going to build that page right there for them. And then it's going to send it down. Now, sometimes it'll send them the stale version and it'll build the new version in the background. And then every future request will get the new version or it'll wait, build them the new version and send it down. It really depends on how your ISR is set up. But the real key here is that when users request your site, if the data is out of date, it's going to regenerate that data for them and send it down. So now your build times are going to be much shorter than with SSG. It's still going to be longer than like a traditional SSR or CSR, but it's going to be shorter because you don't have to build everything up front. Now your server side is also going to be shorter than a standard like SSR or CSR, but it's going to be longer than that static site generation. And that's because some pages are going to return instantly, just like in SSG, but the out of date pages that need to be rebuilt, those are going to take a little bit longer to send down. So there is going to be work on the server side. And as for the client side, it's essentially exactly the same as SSG, where there's really no work that's going on on the client side at all. It's going to be relatively small. So just to reiterate the benefits of this again, is really that if you have a lot of different pages that are going to be changing at a somewhat high frequency, but not high enough of a frequency to need full on SSR, this is a really good alternative where you're going to be getting that fresh data every single time it's actually needed, but it's only going to be rebuilding it once every single time that the new data comes in. And then it's going to keep it cached forever, which gives you really fast responses for everyone else. A really great use case for this, again, would be like an e-commerce site where there's a ton of different pages and things don't update that often. Or if you have a site that's hooked up to some type of CMS, like a content management system, like WordPress or some other content management system, where you're not changing the content too often, this is another great option for ISR because whenever the content is changed, it can just get refetched by the user the first time that they fetch that page. And then every other user after that will get the most up-to-date information instantaneously. So when it comes to determining which option you want to go with, the best thing to do is to look at the graphs over here and determine where do you want the most amount of time to be spent. If you want the most amount of time to be spent on the client, then CSR is going to be the best option for you. But in most cases, we want to minimize the amount of work that is done on the client just so it's easier for them. So really, if you can, ISR or SSG are going to be your best bet because they have the quickest response time out of any option because they're just returning static cached information, which you can really easily globally distribute across the world to make it blazingly fast. The problem though is a lot of sites have dynamic data, they have like authenticated user information and things like that, and that just doesn't work super well for ISR and SSG. So in those cases, I would generally fall to SSR because SSR allows you to actually handle dynamic data really, really well and things like user authentication and stuff like that without actually pushing a lot of that information and workload onto the client. CSR though can still be really great if you just wanna get up and running with a website really quick that you don't actually need a server or anything for because it's all cached easily. So that's gonna be one great option for CSR. But generally, as your application scales, I find that SSR is a much better approach and that's mostly because of the better user experience as well as the better SEO since you have a full HTML page being sent down to the browser. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to build sites using all four of these different techniques, I highly recommend checking out my React Simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description. This course covers all of React as well as Next.js so you can really learn how all these different methods work together across these two different frameworks. If that sounds interesting, it'll be linked down in the description for you. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.